that image was quite controversial to a mm -hmm. lot of people. Some people saw it as irresponsible, some people saw it as dangerous, threatening, whereas other people, and I think including you, saw it as a symbol of something very different. What was it to you? Powerful. Protecting. That it's my freedom. But the people who criticize you, what do they see? A right-wing lunatic. 18 years ago, I traveled across the United States exploring America's deadly love affair with the gun. I witnessed the grim results of these weapons in hospital emergency rooms, morgues and the confused aftermaths of mass shooting sprees. After each new massacre, the newspaper headlines were always the same. Why did it happen here? Since my book was published in the year 2000, more than half a million Americans have been killed by firearms in the USA. 527,000 people dead and many more injured. I decided to return to the subject, to track down each gun owner who I'd met and photographed those years ago, to understand why, despite this death toll, there is such fierce resistance to even moderate gun control laws in the USA. His finger wasn't even on the trigger. That's not what the picture is about. He's not trying to harm me. He's trying to protect me. I'm looking out for myself, my family, my neighbors. Ah. Zen, relaxing. The thought that some people would want to take our guns away, to me, is so ludicrous because the bad guys, the thugs, the murderers, the rapists, are always going to have guns. And all you would be doing would be take them away from the good guys, from us, the law-abiding citizens. People in this country huddle in their houses and throw the deadbolts, but I will not succumb to the scum that is out there. We were at our church last Sunday, and our Sunday school teacher, Mike, asked the class how many people had uh, gun permits, and I would say over two-thirds of the members raised their hands. This is a 38 Taurus, and it's a five-cylinder revolver. It's a concealed hammer and um, it is concealed so that way it doesn't get tangled or stuck on anything when you try to pull it out of your pocket or your purse. If a bad guy tried to get to one of my family members, he would have better luck with a butter knife against a grizzly bear than hurting one of my, my babies. The uh, armadillo where something's digging, look, they've got a big hole. One morning, come down the driveway, stirred across the street, and they're walking right in front of me is the armadillo. So I think, here's my chance. I've got babies. This armadillo carries leprosy. I've got to take this thing out. So I rev up my car, run, 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 and I floorboard it hit the armadillo and it's like bang, whack, wow, bang, boom. When, when they get scared, they jump straight up and they curl into a ball. So all that whop, bam, boom was his shell rolling around up underneath my car. But he was fine. 
I've never heard armadillos carrying leprosy. Sure they not. can. This, you look it up. You Google it. With my babies around, I'm not going to take that chance. So. What percentage of people have guns here, then, would you say? In this neighborhood? Ooh, I would venture to guess everybody in this neighborhood. I doubt if anybody does not have a gun. And do you think that having guns is a great deterrent to people coming into the neighborhood? Oh, absolutely. I can promise you that's the reason they're not coming in here. Stay away from me and stay away from my home and we won't have that problem. Well, this is one of my favorite things to do. Quoting myself. <laughs> With a Bible in one hand and a gun in the other, we can make this country one nation under God once again. In the name of the founding fathers of this great country, don't you ever acquiesce. Don't ever turn your weapons of war and safety. Don't ever turn those over to your government. It is the great equalizer. If two people have a gun, they're equal. Or whoever has the gun, they are supreme. Every time they pass another gun control law, they promise us safety. Do you know who did the same thing? Adolf Hitler. Now there's already 350 million guns in America. What are you gonna do? You're gonna go confiscate them all? Uh, you're gonna make it more difficult for the criminals to get them? They already have them. They can get them faster than you can. The problem with crime in America is recidivism, the repeat offender. If you wanna go after criminals, who misuse guns, the first time you arrest them, get them, go after them, keep them. Second, make sure that the law-abiding citizen is ready, capable, and prepared to shoot back. Uh, you know, my motto uh, comes right from the movie Cinderella. Last year, it was my favorite movie. Really, the motto in Cinderella was, have courage and be kind. I want my daughters armed, I want my wife armed, I want my sons armed, and I want them to be able to defend their families. We've never hurt anybody and we don't want to. But at the same time, we're not gonna just make ourselves an easy target for those who would rape, rob, and plunder. No, no way. I got six machine guns in the house, 10,000 rounds of ammunition in the closet. With the license I have, I could get on the phone today and get a, I could order 100 machine guns and they're here in two weeks. If I could get anything, you know, I have a tank, you know, there's no end, you know. The two hot guns is what I sell, the AK-47s and the AR-15. And I got everybody beat in town with the prices because I buy so many of them. The news people come here and they always blame the gun. You know, they ask me, uh, you know, when that happened, why do you sell guns that kill people? And what do you yeah. tell them? What do I tell them? I said, all these guns were on the wall last night, and I walked in this morning and nobody was dead. Yeah, you know, it's stupid. You know, a gun doesn't kill the people. The, pe the people kill the people, and they just use the gun to kill the people. You know, they can use a fork, a knife, a hammer, a screwdriver. You know, why keep blaming it on the gun? Okay, just give me, uh, just give me $40. Phone won't lock open. Okay. So just keep the safety on. Oh, yeah. Keep your face okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah, you just gotta walk down here. Here, you carry that. Yeah, ah, ah. Oh, there you go. There you go. Which one do you want? It's my birthday and I got a gun for my birthday, so I'm going to shoot it for the first time here today.
We've seen just about everything. M16 assault rifles, AR-15 semi-autos, hunting rifles with homemade silencers. These guns could have been used by anyone. They could have been used in robberies, domestics, and also homicides. Yeah, it was 19 years ago, those words still reign true. Since that time, the laws in the state of Tennessee have changed substantially. You're allowed to carry guns in parks, um, guns in bars, you know, guns in your car. So from a police chief's perspective, I would definitely say that uh, I'd probably prefer if we did not have guns in bars. I got a 410 shotgun from Santa Claus last year. Um, right now, our best selling rifle is the Smith & Wesson. It's just, you know, a fun gun to shoot. People just, you know, go to the range and go shoot them. Have fun. <laughs> is it a hunting rifle as well? Yes, it can be a hunting rifle. Doesn't really seem fair on the animal. No, <laughs> it doesn't. You know, poor Bambi and all. <laughs> This pistol right here, the Glock semi-automatic pistol, is one of the biggest, biggest movie guns ever. I get kids out here that think they know what they're doing because they saw it in a movie. They're dangerous. We have to go out there and stop them and actually educate them on how to handle a firearm immediately. Okay, I've got one of our most popular self-defense rounds here. It is 124 grain, nine millimeter jacketed hollow point. It expands rapidly hitting organic material such as your flesh. A couple of Mausers. We also have an AR-15, which is a huge seller. It really is. This is an extremely accurate weapon at very long ranges. But I mean, someone wouldn't buy that for home protection, would they? Oh, most definitely. I wouldn't buy my bed for home protection. My wife actually has a Benelli M4 by her bed, which is a semi-automatic shotgun. What? But what does it do? Having that next to your bed, what does that do to your mindset? Does it, does it not make you feel constantly vigilant and prepared? No, not at all. I mean, definitely prepared all the way. But I also have a family that I love and care about very much. If you do watch the news, you see it all the time. Home invasion here, home invasion there, highway shooting. I mean, it's pretty much, it, it can be like the Wild West out here. Most shootings take place in domestic situations. A sizable number of people who kill other people are so-called law-abiding citizens. The law-abiding citizen produces a lot of the fatalities by mistake, in anger, or by accident. Several years ago, there was a, a surgeon here in Memphis who did a study of murders in two different urban areas, seeing if the presence or absence of guns in a home was a trigger or a protection from a murder, and his conclusion was that the presence of the gun 
was more likely to cause a murder or death by gun than the absence of a gun in a home. The protest held against the NRA convention took place 10 days after Columbine. You know, what, what happened at Columbine uh, on April 20th, 1999 was that two, two young men who were intent on killing as many students as they could, they opened fire on students outside and then went, uh, when, when confronted with uh, a police presence, they went inside the school uh, began shooting there, went into the library, and that's where they, they, they killed and, and injured the most students, and that's, that's where my son was. It went worse as the day went on. No word from him, being asked by the police if we could provide a description of him and what he was wearing. At one point asking for dental records and being told at one point that there was one last school bus bringing students back from Columbine. When you're waiting for 45 minutes for a bus that should have only taken a couple of minutes, I then began to realize that there was no last school bus. And how old was Daniel when he died? 15. 15. Seventeen years ago when we last met, I think it ended in tears for me because I realized again what I, what I would do if they came to take my guns. That would be the end of it for this country for sure, and I'm not willing to hand that over. I know I'm able to do it, and I know I would do it. What's it? Protect my rights the rights of my friends, the rights of my loved ones, the rights of this country. Yeah, but you mean armed struggle. Oh, we have a staple right under the tree. I think so. I'll probably take everything out and start. I wouldn't let it go easily, and probably not while I'm living. I feel like there are a lot of gun owners out there who don't take the responsibility of owning guns, carrying guns, storing guns. I don't think they take it seriously enough. Well, why the resistance to regulation? Because it leads to more regulation. It's too slippery of a slope. We can't have laws to protect people from their own stupidity. 180 degrees back is select. Guys use the word sexy when they talk about guns. I'm not going to, but they're romantic. They're emotional. A well-regulated militia being necessary for the security of a free state, comma, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The Second Amendment in every state constitution guarantees my right to keep and bear arms. Why? For my personal safety and to preserve liberty. That's why. 
It's called America. We got 911. What's the location of the emergency? New York School. I think there's somebody shooting in here. Mass shootings in America have become almost commonplace, but the Sandy Hook school massacre, where six and seven year olds were targeted by a gunman, reached a new level of horror and cut to the raw nerve of the American gun debate. Did it cause me to want to strengthen gun laws? Absolutely not. I think if one of those teachers, the principal, whoever had had a gun, that young man possibly would not have killed anyone, or very few of the children would have died. Do you think a teacher is going to be able to cope with a gunman with an AR-15 assault rifle? I think a properly trained teacher uh, can, can adjust to any threat that they deal with. I think it's friggin' fantastic that certain school districts are training their teachers so they can carry a weapon in school. Um, we go through drills and we put ourselves in real scenarios. It was interesting to see how fast we get on the buses, how fast we do this, who actually got hit by the, the paintball gun. Uh, it was pretty cool, but pretty, you know, real life scary too. The SWAT team comes into our room and they're like, okay, everybody out, you know, put your hands up. And we're all putting our hands up and we're terrified and it takes us out, so. You had a SWAT team coming to your Yeah, school. we had a SWAT team. Yes, we did. Yes, this was in middle school. So people do sense that possibility of Oh, yeah. Well, we got to be prepared. What do every single mass shooting have in common? Gun-free zones. I mean, there was, I think there was an armed guard at Columbine. from my cold, dead hands. You know, I, I think that part of the problem is that, that the gun lobby has been very successful in getting their message out much more so than those who want to see reasonable gun laws. They've, they've controlled the narrative that you're either for the Second Amendment or against it. You're either for freedom or against freedom. The surest way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. After these mass shootings, gun sales do tend to go up um, just because people start getting freaked out. People think that the government is going to take all our guns. I mean, I hate seeing the shootings happen, but it is definitely, it is good for business. This is a Smith & Wesson M&P 15. It is our best-selling weapon right now. They look pretty tough. Uh, you know, you look like you're a, a bad, a badass, I guess. <laughs> Assault weapons seem to attract controversy. Yeah. What is that? This is a semi-automatic rifle. Is it, is it not an assault weapon? No. Why not? Semi-automatic. One pull the trigger, one shot. And that's what differentiates it, is it, in, in your eyes, the fact that one's fully automatic and the other isn't? Right. Why are they controversial then? <laughs> because the media and the left-wing politicians want to make boogeyman out of, out of a tool. What is an assault rifle? I mean, uh, there's such a debate even about what it is. I know, I know, and I shouldn't even call them an assault rifle. You know? <laughs> it's a military-style weapon. That's what they want me to say. A sporting gun, you know. You know, different names, but it's the same thing. It's a military weapon. The only reason to buy an assault rifle is if you're going to make an assault on an enemy position and you need a lot of bullets because you got a lot of people in the position you're attacking. The assault rifle was meant for an assault. It seems to me you don't need an assault rifle to kill a deer. This, this ongoing debate that some people have about whether 
things like the AK-47 and the AR-15 are assault weapons or not. That whole discussion is absurd. That, that It's the greatest friend that a mass shooter could have. Jefferson County 911. The two killers went out in search of guns. They were under 18. They got an 18-year-old to go to the gun show, to a gun show with them to make the purchase. They purposely sought out a private seller. That's the so-called gun show loophole, where you can go to a gun show and at one table, if it's a licensed dealer, you have to go through a background check. Table of a private seller, no background check. There's guns that I sold and everybody sells, every gun dealer, that are found all around the United States in crimes. They should have, uh, you know, mandatory registration uh, nationwide. Everybody that owns a gun, it should go be registered in their name and they're responsible for that weapon. Why should you let some kid walk in a gun store, buy 15 guns, and be able to give them to 15 of his friends with no receipt that he even sold them and everything's legal? That means guns could be shipped in from the East Coast and the West Coast and sold in the newspaper to, to anybody that, that can't pass the background check. That's how the criminals get guns. About 40% of all gun sales are private sales. They don't go through a background check. That means they're not going through a licensed dealer. Imagine going to an airport and have to go through security, and they said, okay, we're gonna have 60% of the people go through security and 40% can bypass it. Would you get onto that airplane? I can take you right now, three miles from here, and buy you anything you want on the side of the road. Who's selling them then? Black market dealers. It's it's out there. Uh, Facebook, for example, you can buy guns all day long on Facebook. You know, but just privately. Privately, yeah, and, and that is still legal in Tennessee. You can, as of now, you can still do private sales in Tennessee, but without a background. Without check. a background check, you can. So you can sell it to anyone. Yes. Some people are trying to introduce a law that says that shouldn't be allowed, that you shouldn't be allowed to sell a gun without a background check. Do you think you should or you shouldn't be allowed to? Do you not want to answer that one? Mm, I'd prefer not to. Okay. Maybe there needs to be some things done to people where they're back to working again and not being given money by the government to run around and do whatever they want to. There's a lot of things we could address. Maybe that's not the only problem. It could be some mental health issues. It could be drugs causing these problems. I, I don't know the answer, but we are not the problem. Can anything be done? Should anything be done? No. Let natural selection uh, take its course.